Okay, so we've imported keywords into our system and now we can look at the keyword grid. Now, what the keyword grid does, it basically ranks, filters, and sorts out all the keywords so that the keyword that can give you the most profit per month floats to the top. Now, when you look at the construction of these words, you can see that courses sits at the top of the vertical. Remember in previous videos we spoke about the data pyramid where the bigger keywords sit at the top, the long tail sit at the bottom. Courses will be one of the, the the words that sit at the top of the vertical and it's not necessarily what we're interested in. Designers is another word the same. Landscape design is getting closer to what we want to talk about. Just we want to talk about sustainable uh, permaculture and creating environments that are creating food and looking after water resources as well as creating energy. Okay, so as we look through this list, you can see that we've got a lot of red X's and there's a lot of keywords in the red. Now, what's this what this is telling us up front is that this market does not have a lot of search in it, okay? So when we look at the search volumes, you can see that there's not a lot of search volume specifically pertaining to this market. Now, there's two things we can do. We can either decrease our costs or we can basically... Um, increase what we're going to charge for a product to try and make these all pass and be relevant. You don't have to do that, it's just two things you can do to make these low red X's go away. All this is telling you is that once you're ranked for that keyword, so for example design build will take us roughly 81 months to get ranked because it's 523 million pages. Okay. So within that 80 months, we're not going to make back the money that it's going to cost us to get ranked for the keyword. And we can see this keyword is going to cost us 35 grand to uh, promote and do all the work to get ranked for the keyword. But our yield per month is very low. So it's not a keyword we're really interested in. So that can be one of the keywords you can delete out of your grid. Okay. Alternatively, what you can do is you can basically go and tweak out a few things and see what's actually going on. So we'll click on the business filters and rules and I'll just talk you through this. So we've got the project filter parameters and the first one here, show rows, basically tells us that it'll show us 100 keywords. I personally like working with 30, that's my favorite and I like looking at the top 30 keywords when I first start moving and working with the blueprint. Later on when I'm looking for other specific keywords, I either increase it to 50 or I basically um, use the filters to find the keyword subsets I'm looking for. Next is website theme computer average page rank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into my analysis folder where I've done some research. I'm going to go to white paper and obviously we're looking for permaculture courses. I'm going to open up that image where I've taken a snapshot. And on permaculture courses, we basically can see that the sites have got page ranks of 3, 5, 3, 4, 4, 2, 4. So I would say on average, the page rank is a page rank of 3. What you'll also notice is that there's a lot of deep pages that are getting ranked. The permaculture.org has got a page rank of 5. It's a top level domain. This is a, a deeper page. Most of the pages that are ranked are pages that are actually one level down within the site. So that's okay. That gives us a bit of hope there. So I set my page rank to three. That adjusts everything. If you're in a very competitive niche and you want to buffer your pages and um, you want to write a bit more content, you can actually add a buffer onto it. So you can actually add one or two, three, four, up to ten extra pages per keyword. And that will increase the cost as well. Typically by default, it's left to zero. The golden niche identifier is set to a hundred thousand pages phrase match that earn me more than a thousand dollars per month. And what this does is puts a gold star next to the keywords that actually qualify on those rules so we can easily identify them when we look at the grid. We can modify the silo structures and we can do this by looking at the, the keywords. <coughs> Our blueprint costs, they're both thirty-five and twenty-five. Um, I'm going to reduce this down. Let's just say, we t as an example, we take our writing for the primary site down. And I just want to update the filters and see if that improves things for us so we can get more, bit more text. If it does, then obviously you can go speak to the writers or look for another writer that can write your content. Um, on a lot of the keywords, it doesn't because the, the actual development cost outranks the actual profit that will come back from keywords over here. Now, what you've got to remember is that 
when we're using the business rules and filters, we're trying to get the best marketing mix possible, looking at all the variables. Okay, so let's just say we make our course $100. We want to make $100 profit. Let's update the f features now and see if this brings this project more into balance. So it's introduced a few more keywords. You can see as we increase the price of what we need to charge, it's uh, brought a bit more keywords into into profit. From our market research looking at this project, we've seen that guys are charging anything between two and five hundred pounds per per course. So I'm gonna change this up to two hundred and let's have a look and see what happens if we charge two hundred dollars. Now if we translate the dollars to pounds, um, the pounds to dollars, you're probably looking at something short of a thousand dollars for a course. And there you can see it's actually opened up a lot more markets. So when speaking to clients where this becomes really good with your business decisions and filters, you can actually look at what they're charging and they can either increase their, their, their profit to basically reduce the IT debt faster or they can play the long-term game. Now you can use this comparison on the side to actually look at the two. Uh, within 12 months, that keyword will make $321,000. <laughs> Within 12 months, this makes us $3,000 over the year. So these words have value, just in the short term, they don't. So I'm going to roll this back just to uh, 47, which we said in the beginning, as our profit. I'm going to update that. And when we look at the annual, and I look at permaculture design, that keyword has passed my business rules it's worth three thousand dollars to my business per year. Permaculture garden is worth a thousand dollars. So permaculture design course is worth nine hundred dollars. Okay, and that's just purely because of the search volume. But now, when you look at the competing pages, these type of keywords have super low competing pages. We haven't even broken a hundred thousand competing pages, so we can get ranked really quickly. You can see over here our time to rank is twelve months. We need to write twelve articles and uh, we need about eight backlinks to get ranked for that one specific keyword. <clears throat> That'll make us two conversions per month, two sales per month based on what we're selling. So this this works quite nice and um, depending on the different markets you get different figures but this is typically how it, things work. So if we look at the, the, the makeup of this keyword we can actually just click on the little chart there and this takes us into the keyword we actually drop under the hood and this is where we can actually see what's going on with this keyword and this is the funnel the click-through funnel so we can see our tra traffic click-through conversions our on-page conversions backlink and content development cost the income potential income versus expenditure and it is it profitable at the end and you can see that this keyword is only contributing 8% of our actual traffic requirement okay so we need a lot more traffic 856 is not going to get us anywhere near the 11,000 hits per month that we need to achieve our financial goal so what's great about the keyword decision screen is just by looking at this information and looking at what the objectives are of the project or what the business is trying to achieve we can very quickly see okay cool this market does not have that much interest or it's a new and emerging market um, to achieve 11,000 heads so do we do information campaigns do we do paid search using different keywords is the keywords we selected the right keywords that we actually drilled in it sparks all these questions up front before you really get into actually go building websites and paying graphic designers and developers and all that other kind of stuff to get the sites live Okay, so as we look through this, we can see that two actions will take place with the traffic from this keyword. We'll get two sales roughly. We can look at our backlink and development costs. They're all working. And at the end of the day, we get a 90% score, 94% score of quality. And the only reason why this reduces quality is that the keyword does not have enough traffic to basically look after it. So what you do with the business rules and filters screen is you just adjust and tweak and change the settings on the screen to basically help you determine what it is that you need to make. So this is a very 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 powerful screen. The solid from screen is exceedingly powerful and with the business rules and filters we can really customize, tweak and 
get a very strong idea of what we're dealing with, how we're dealing with it, what the costs are up front. 